Hello everyone, my name is Zug Guerra and this is another edition of Hugo's Desk. I really apologize for the uh, radio silence that I've been having lately, but I've been really busy with work. I've been doing a lot of game trailers, which you guys will all see uh, very soon. Uh, so I couldn't really do a lot of videos lately, but uh, I return now with a series that I really enjoyed doing last time, which was the Disconstruction series. Uh, last time I did Disconstruction with Rival Kingdoms, and of course if you want you can go into my channel to Yugo's Desk and click on the links that you can see now on the screen, and you can go and check out the Disconstruction videos. And just like before, the Disconstruction videos, it's all about me opening an actual production shot and showing you how it was done it's that's really it uh, i'm going to disconstruct the comp i'm going to kind of show you how we did it inside of nuke uh, and how we did the visual effects now i have a very special shot uh, to show you this time so this shot comes from a trailer that i did a few years ago for uh fire dot smoke and it was for square enix for just cause 3. it was called firestarter it was the reveal trailer for just cause 3. The really too cool thing and that something that makes me really proud is that this video became, uh, one of the shots from this video became part of the Foundry's Nuke showreel. Uh, so I was really proud of that and everyone at Fire Dot Smoke was very proud of that. Uh, so this time I'm going to show you how that shot was done. Um, so the, the shot, the project in question, of course, you should check out and at fire.smoke's website um, it's the firestarter trailer for just cause 3 uh, you can click on the link and uh, below and have a look at the trailer and also we have a really really great breakdown for you to see as well now let's just dive in uh, into the shot so this shot the cool thing about it is that it's not a very conventional shot you know so usually you know you guys know me i'm very methodical i usually do uh, very methodical comps but this is really a different thing. This is a different beast entirely. This comp is a very simple comp. As you can see, I, I have very few nodes on it, especially because it's a highly stylized shot. So it's very common. Uh, this kind of work was very common um, at the mill back in the day, uh, you know, which is a typical thing for a commercial compositor to do, uh, to just come up with a shot uh, with almost nothing, you know, just trying to come up with something with stock footage, with some CG renders, with whatever they could get their hands on. So keep in mind that this is not a technical comp at all. It's not. Like that's if you're looking for compositing on a technical level, this is not the correct place to see on this specific video. This video is all about an artistic shot. So when you look at some of my nodes and how I actually did the comp, you will probably understand that I did a couple of shortcuts and I did some stuff that is considered incorrect. But all fair in games, you know, when we're trying to do a, a really cool shot, it doesn't really matter how we did it as long as it looks cool and the shot looks really cool. I mean, otherwise it wouldn't have been, been uh, actually displayed in the showreel from the Foundry this year. And I must say I was very proud of that and I'm also very proud that I've been now part of the Foundry's showreel for uh, three years in a row. Uh, the first two years with the mill, of course, when I was the head of Nuke and now this third year with Fire Dot Smoke. So I'm really happy with that. Let's, uh, but you know, I'm just whapping about now. Uh, let me just talk about this shot. So basically this is the shot, as you can see, very stylized shot, basically start with, uh, you know, a very big defocus, uh, bouquet defocus. And then we have a huge explosion behind the car. The car is the, you know, Rico's car from Just Cause 3. It's a CG asset that we got. The bridge is also CG asset from the game. The car is a CG asset from the game. And then there is a gigantic amount of, of uh, stock footage that we used for this shot and a lot of color correction, a lot of glows and a lot of things like that. Really simple shot. But like I said, this project had a lot of these shots where we just basically experimented quite a lot of shots um, just by trying some stock footage together, by trying certain color corrections, trying some silhouettes. It was a very graphical project, so it wasn't really a very common uh, type of composite. Uh, let me just guide you through this, how this was actually done. I'm going to go into the middle of the shot here. So I'm just going to go back into the top here. As you can see, it's very simple. It's still very organized. You know, you know me, I'm very organized. So uh, it's still very organized, but it kind of starts with the car. So the car is nothing more than a CG render, a still from V-Ray. And this still is just the actual asset from the car. So this was a render made by uh, my fellow lead uh, CG artist of this project, uh, Jimmy um, and he did this V-Ray, and of course we have all the typical passes we have from V-Ray, although I'm not using them. The only pass I'm using is the object ID. So it was a bit of an overkill, but you never knew, you know, because I didn't really know what we were going to do to the shot. So I figured, you know, maybe we can just 
try some stuff out. So the first thing I did here was I did some roto, um, and the rotoscoping here uh, basically is trying to give get rid of some lights uh, because there was some stuff that I didn't want on the shot. And then I shuffled out the ID, the object ID. Uh, I used the object ID and then graded it by red and then merged it on top. So that was the first step, was to basically remove completely the brightness of the car and then uh, start by putting the red uh, object ID on top. Then after that, I did a glow. Uh, this glow was a direct glow that we made. Uh, you know, it's nothing more fancy than just a brightness of two and no tolerance and just a size of 50, uh, 500, uh, 50. So this was just an idea of having this kind of dark and kind of like moody look inside the car, almost like it was the car from the devil because, you know, Rico is the devil. Uh, and then, of course, I did the mandatory crop because, of course, the glow, you have to be a bit careful because the glow kind of brings your bonding box to a bigger place. So in this side also we had the comet and uh, this, this was a comet rendered by a lovely CG artist that worked with this project called uh, David Urban and, and he did this wonderful uh, simulation of particles that we used as a loop. Then I did some time offset to it, I did some grade, uh, did some transformation of course I ended up with a huge bonding box because of transformation, did a crop I didn't really change the crop much because you'll see later why and then I put a sharp in and I know you guys are probably going to start thinking, oh, why did you have a sharp in there? Well, you know, I, I don't really care. I just wanted to kind of push the actual detail of the look. Remember, this is a very stylized shot. So uh, the whole idea was to make it stylized. So it doesn't really matter that I put a sharp in there. I know it's not technically correct, but who cares? It looks cool. So... After that, of course, this was merged to the car. You don't really see it here because it's all outside this, the, the bonding box, but you'll see later. Um, then I have a mirror and I have a transform. Now, the transform is when you actually start seeing uh, that um, you actually have the stock footage attached to the car. I'm going to leave the alpha channel so you can kind of see. Then I have a time blur. I have a bit of defocus. And then here's when the fun begins. On this side, I have the bridge. Now, the bridge is nothing more than a piece of the CG uh, elements from the game. Not very fancy, as you can see. Very low quality, very low poly. Doesn't really matter. This was just for me to have the silhouette. So after that, I transformed the bridge, uh, made a crop, uh, made a bit of grade so that I would have just the silhouette. So after a lot of transformations, uh, a bit of defocus, a bit of cropping, I got just the actual silhouette of the bridge. And of course, uh, mind that uh, back then when I was doing this, I did a lot of versions. So I had the bridge quite more far away, and that's why I wanted the actual asset of the bridge. By all the versions, we ended up actually being quite close to the bridge. So this could have been fixed by just a rotoscope by just using a roto shape, but you know, um, I didn't know that at the time, so that's why I kind of used the bridge. Once that's done, um, we then use that to cut uh, basically the particles and also to cut the car. So first of all, I have the particles. Again, this is a piece of stock footage that I got uh, from the web. I can't remember where I bought it again, uh, but if I do remember where I bought it, I'll put the link. Uh, typical stuff, I did some transforms, I did some reformats, some shuffling, some defocusing into it, and then I used the mask of the car to merge the particles behind the car so that you would have the particles behind it. Again, just a little little element that we put in there. After that, we finally merged the bridge with the car uh, and everything together. And so this is now the first time we have the actual bridge as an alpha channel here. You don't see it yet because it's all black. And then you have the car and the smoke. Now, after that, we finally bring in the big Cahoon explosion. Now, the big Cahoon explosion is actually a stock footage. Again, can't really remember where it comes from. I think it's from Artbeats. I can check later. But this is just a, you know, a huge explosion uh, that was shot on live action. And I really like live action. I like, like live action because it just gives it a really big stylized thing to the um, to the to the comp. So, you know, that's why I like it. But so this was the piece of stock footage we used. Um from there we kind of, you know, uh, did some transform, some sharpening, some defocusing, um a bunch of stu stuff, you know, just basically just made it better. Uh, and then we merged all of it together. Um, now, as we merged together, I um, should have put a crop here, actually. So I probably, I did this quite fast. So this this comp was really fast. Um, it was just a few days of work uh, as we transitioned from the versions and then we finished it off. I think it didn't took more than a day, probably, in total. So this is the main shot for now. So we, as you can see, we have the... Uh, the car, we have the smoke, and then we have the bridge. And then after that, I do my 
typical glow so i had a really uh, large glow uh, that i would use very blurry glow so that first glow is like a very low brightness very high 50 glow blur then i have a very small blur 11 uh, of blur and then i merged as a screen now i did a screen operation because i didn't want the overexposure so i screened that glow and that just gave me this kind of diffuse feeling to it so that it would actually blend the fire into the car uh, and then i did the secondary diffuse so that it would just basically bring to life all the redness of the fire of course this gave me a bigger bounding box a bit of crop there and then as i went in i did even more diffuse so then after that i did i used yet another glow this time a 100 glow uh, that i screened on top and that gave me even more diffusing this time giving me the the actual spread of the bridge now it's really important to have these kind of glow spreads when you have fire because then when you put grain on top it will really make it filmic you know it will really make it cinematic on the other hand, I had a bit of a glint effect here. It's very subtle, you know, we used to have it quite large, but uh, I kind of tone it down quite a lot and you hardly see it, as you can see. So it started as a nice idea, but then it kind of didn't really work. So we just tone it down a lot. And then at some point you don't even see it almost. I don't, I don't think we even need it here. After that, as you can see, I have a bouquet node here. So the bouquet node, the bouquet blur is a node from uh, Jason Bindwell, and it's like a, a node you can find on Wikipedia. Thank you so much, Jason, for the bouquet blur. I use it all the time. Um, and as you can see, as if I go to the first frame, this is doing nothing more than this first frame, a very defocused, and also the last frame where it's very defocused as well. So I've just animated that so that you could start with the focus and end with the focus because I was doing a very stylized trailer so then I could cut much easier if I had that kind of thing going so so that was what that is then after that I have a bit of displacement because this was all supposed to be very hot because it's a fire so I have again yet another piece of stock footage now you sh you've probably noticed by now that I use a lot of stock footage even when you look at the rival kingdoms thing it's important to use stock footage as a 2D artist because stock footage really can save your ass a lot of times. Um, so this is just a piece of art beat stock footage that I bought, a piece of fire, um, almost like a dap uh, backdraft kind of fire from the ceiling. I used some reformatting, some I've, I've kind of merged it and squashed it, and then I used uh, the PXF Distort, which is a, a node from Xavier Bork, and you can find it on pixelfudger.com. You can also find it on Wikipedia. Uh, so, um, a really good node, much better than the actual Nuke uh, I Distort. And this basically just gave me this kind of feeling of heat uh, and distortion. Not only it blurred a little bit, but also gave me a bit of distortion that it would kind of look like there was a bit of fire then a bit of crop after that a sharpen uh again not very correct to put sharpens like this but i was doing a very graphical thing so i wanted to look really sharp then i had a bit of a grade uh, this grade was nothing more than just like a bit of a lift a bit of a multiply a bit of a gamma you know just to give it a bit more punch uh, after that i had a radial this radial was kind of my vignette i overexposed it a little bit so that the interior of the vignette wasn't involved and then after that i had a bit of grade node and that this is just bringing the vignette down and then the other one is pushing the middle up and this is very important because it's supposed to be fire so it's supposed to be very very hot so a lot of times fire overexposes on footage so that's really important for you to do that uh, and that kind of gave me that kind of really nice uh, feeling uh, and then i had the you know uh, lens distortion node uh, again lens distortion just really nice on these graphical things to just give a bit of distortion then i had a chromatic aberration node chromatic aberration this chromatic aberration node is from uh, Wikipedia as well the lens distortion node i just used the random lens that i had from another project uh, it doesn't really matter it's a it's a very this it's a, it's a very stylized project so it doesn't really matter and then a bit of a crop and then of course a grain i'm very very fond of using the l grain uh, from luma pictures again you can go to lumapictures.com or you can go to nukipedia and you'll find it the l grain is very powerful so and as you can see it gives you a very nice diffuse grain and that's kind of it and that was that's it for the shot and as you can see now very started last shot very simple shot very proud of this shot because it's part of the showreel of the foundry so you know I guess I'll see you guys next time. So I'm gonna, I'm, I'm preparing quite a lot of more disconstruct videos for you guys. So 
I'm really looking forward to giving you some disconstruction on more Just Cause 3 shots on some of the home front uh, um, cinematic trailers that we've made as well. So I have quite a lot of things planned. So hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, of course, of course, subscribe and like my video. Leave some comments on, on the bottom as well. Would love to know what you guys think about the video. Um, and I hope to see you guys very soon. So goodbye.